Hallelujah. Amen. It's nice to see you again. Welcome to Rhema Word in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Pastor Ray from IPCC Church in Portsmouth. I welcome you this afternoon uh, to join me in uh, talking about what God says about certain situations in our life in Jesus' name. I want to start off with a little prayer right now in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word today. I pray, Father, it reaches the hearts and the minds of those who wish to hear it. And may you bless those, Father, who are listening to this service this afternoon. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hallelujah. We're in difficult times. We're in times of real stress where people are dying and uh, needlessly dying, but dying nevertheless. And uh, what I want to talk about is not necessarily the virus or uh, uh, what's going on with the virus, but how it brings us into isolation. And isolation can actually um, deter people from doing what they need to do. It's a place of, well, as the word says, isolation. You're isolated from all the people you know, think, feel and touch. And that isolation can be destroying to people who, are, who haven't got a sound mind. You know what? Jesus has given us a sound mind. A sound mind. And isolation, even in itself, can be detrimental to our health in the name of Jesus. I want to tell you a little story about myself, first of all. I found myself uh, in a place of isolation many, many years ago before I became a Christian. Uh, I was in a situation, I won't go through the situation, tell you about the situation, but it was a, a bad situation where I found myself... Uh, at two o'clock in the morning uh, at, a, at a church. Uh, the pastor of the church was a, a friend of mine. I knew him quite well, the Reverend Gray from Farnham in Aldish, in, near Aldershot. And uh, I went to him at two o'clock in the morning and uh, he opened the door and uh, he said, hello, Ray. He said, what do you want? And I wasn't a Christian at the time. I didn't know anything about God. I wasn't interested. But for some reason, I found myself outside this church I went in there and he invited me in. We had a cup of coffee and we talked for a few minutes. He said, what would you like to do? I said, I'd like to go into the church. And I wasn't a believer. I didn't really believe in God at this time. And I wasn't really interested. But I had a desperate need to find a church. So I went in. He said, I'll take you down to the church. So he took me down to this dank church. It was cold. It was miserable. And uh, I went into the church. There was no lights on. And uh, he sat there for a few minutes. He said... Do you want me to stay with you? I said, no, please just leave me on my own. And uh, as, I, as he left my own, on my own, I was, I was cold, I was fearful. A lot of things were going around in my mind. I felt isolated from everyone I knew, totally separate from the world, uh, the real world. And I, I was just on my own. I felt so miserable and depressed and down, not knowing where to turn. But all of a sudden, as I thought about these things, this this feeling of warmth came over my whole body and I started to feel warm inside. I, felt, I started to feel comforted uh, in this church building in the name of Jesus. And though I didn't know about Jesus at this time, I felt something was wrapping itself around me. And years later, um, I realised it had to be the power of the Holy Spirit just wrapping me around with his love. No longer was I isolated. No longer was I in uh, on my own. I had someone or something that was going to help me though no one told me about Jesus at the time I started to realize something was going on at this point but I left the church and I never thought any more about it and I just carried on my life but for that point in time for that hour or so that I was in the church I felt I felt happy I felt that I wasn't alone in my situation that uh, there was a God who was there to help me, even though I didn't appreciate God at the time. I went, about, I went about and lived my own life. And then 20 years later, I find myself giving my heart to Jesus Christ at the age of 45. So I found myself in that isolated position. Now, I want to talk about um, isolation. Isolation is something none of us want to be. None of us want to be on our own. We all want to have people around us and we are herd people. We need to be gathered together in one so that we can support one another. And I want to talk about a woman who found herself in isolation in the name of Jesus. And uh, the only time that she found comfort was in the arms of Jesus Christ. Now, why don't you turn, if you've got your Bibles, please. I'll give you a few minutes to open your Bible up to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 5. And uh, verse 25, chapter 5, verse 25 in the Gospel of, Mar of uh, Mark. Uh, Jesus had come out and he was going to see Jairus. Uh, his daughter had died and on the way to see Jairus, he was stopped by a woman 
It says in uh, verse 25, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and suffered many things from many physicians. She spent all that she had, but was no better, but rather grew worse. Now this woman, I don't want to talk about the miracle, because we all know about the miracle, how she touched the hem of his garment and was healed totally. And that's right and proper. But I want to talk about this woman was in isolation. Total isolation for 12 years. She couldn't go out. She was deemed as unclean and unfit to be in society. And when this pandemic is on, we all feel that, uh, I don't know about you, but when I go out there, I see people who are frightened. I see people who are frightened and they walk the other side of the road or they walk on the road. It's a danger to themselves. And they want to get out of your way. And they just want to run away from you as if you've got some sort of leprosy in the name of Jesus. I remember when I was in India a few years ago and I took, they took me down to a leper colony and they said, you cannot touch the lepers. You can't go near the lepers. But I got near them. I didn't touch them because I wasn't allowed to. But I got near to them because I believe in Psalm 91 that no, that no plague shall befall you. I really seriously believe that. That I tell you what, I am going to die healthy. I am not going to die with an illness on my body. I'm going to die healthy in the name of Jesus. I want to die fitter than I came into the world in Jesus' name. So be rest assured that if you've got fear on your life, fear is going to make you ill. Fear will kill you. Fear will destroy your life, not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually. Fear will, will just do things to you that God never wants to happen in your life. So let's get away from fear. Let's not worry about uh getting close to people i know the the, the government say isolate be two meters away that's absolutely fine but i came in this morning and i shook hands with a couple of people i'm not worried one bit and the people i'm talking to have faith to believe that whatever they do they nothing will touch them in the name of jesus i was talking with a young man out there called richard cunningham and uh we just shook hands we had a good chat he's going on the program next week but you know god bless him in the name of jesus god bless him he has no fear no fear whatsoever and this woman this certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years she was frightened fearful Fearful. It tells us later on. It says, but the woman fearing and trembling, verse 33, fearing and trembling, know what happened to her, uh, came to her and fell down for her and told him the whole truth. So fear can destroy you. And this woman was isolated for 12 long years. 12 long years of thinking about what was going to happen to her. But know what? And then it goes on. They say, verse 27, and when she heard about who? Jesus. She came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She heard about Jesus. Let me tell you right now, if you're sitting at home and you're isolated and you're fearful about going out, fearful about touching people, fearful about even talking to people on the phone, fearful, 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 let me tell you, that is totally against what God says. The Bible says, have no fear in Jesus' name. Have no fear. So we not have, we've not got to have fear in our life. Fear, as I said a few minutes ago, will destroy you physically and emotionally and spiritually. It will destroy you. So let's come against fear. And I see so many Christians are fearful, fearful about what's going to happen. If you, if you die, you die. You die, you're going to die anyway. But if you die and you're born again, you know where you're going. You have a certainty that whatever happens, you're going to be with the Lord. You're going to be with Jesus Christ. You step from this mortal coil into immortality. You're with Jesus. From the minute you die, you're with Jesus. So let's be happy about the fact, okay, I've got to, I, I'm going to isolate myself, but you know what? I'm still going to be social with people. I'm still going to smile at people when I go down in town. I'm still going to uh, just talk to people. I'm going to talk to people normally, but people are running away. They're worried to death about what's going on in the name of Jesus. But this woman, she heard about Jesus. And let me tell you now, if you're sitting at home, I'm telling you about Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, the one who can heal you of everything, the one who can stop your fear, the one who can stop you running uh, to, uh, into, into that fear abyss and saying, what can I do? What can I do? When I was in that church, I was fearful. I was worried. My life was coming to a, uh, coming, it was a bit of a mess at that point in my life. It was a real mess. 
But I knew I didn't know Jesus. But you know what? He came into that church. He wrapped himself around me. And I felt the love of God in my life. For the first time in my life, in the first time in 20, in 20 years, I felt real love in my life. The love of Jesus Christ. And if you're sitting at home now feeling isolated, feeling, thinking, well, what can, go, what can get worse? Well, there's a lot, can, a lot can get worse than you uh, being indoors on your own. If you're indoors, you can get on do things. You can paint, you can decorate, do the garden. There's things you can do. You can actually read the Bible, which will be a, a, a real asset to you, just to read the Bible in the name of Jesus. And just pray in Jesus' name. Start to pray and pray as you've never prayed before. And you say, oh, I don't know how to pray. Then start Start learning how to pray. And the biggest prayer, we can, the, the, the greatest prayer we can ever make, one word, is help. Help. Just cry out to Jesus, help, in Jesus' name. I remember when I was born again, I, I didn't know anything about Jesus Christ. But I tell you what, the only word I could utter was help. And he came into my life and changed my life. He changed my life. For, uh, to, uh, nearly 30 years ago now he changed my life and I'm so grateful that he did but now I have no fear I have no fear about what man can do I have no fear about what the devil can do because the devil is under my feet and I tell you what now the devil is under your feet you should stand up and, and be counted stand up for Jesus this woman she decided to get out from where she was she decided in her heart and mind to say you know what I've heard about Jesus. I'm just going to find him and see what he can do for me. You don't have to find him. He's already with you right now. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So you don't have to go looking for him. He's looking for you. He's looking for you. As he went out and looked for the, the, the lost lamb, the, the 100th that had gone, 99 were in the penfold and one had gone astray. He's looking for you right now. He's looking to, to change your life in the name of Jesus as he was looking for me. How could he use me uh, of, a, of a, a bad background, came from poverty, from nothing? God's not worried about who you are. He's worried about what God can make of you in the name of Jesus. So be assured, God is with you always and to the end of the age. I have people in my church, they're nursing in my church, and I heard a heart-rending story from my sister Tamika yesterday that she, she, she was crying because people around her were dying. Friends were dying. Friends in Africa were dying. Friends in this country were dying. And she's a nurse and she's seeing it on the front at every single turn and she's not the only one there's many other sisters in the church who are seeing this in the name of Jesus but what I intend to do and what some of the girls have done they're raising up funds to to send their belongings back to Africa they can't send the body back the bodies are being cremated and we need to raise up funds to help these people to send their belongings back to their homeland in uh, in Africa or wherever they come from so I'm pleading with you right now the account details are on on the on the on the screen right now if you want to support these women and send their belongings of the bereaved people, send it back to uh, their country, then please put some money into that account. It's a church account and I'll make sure it gets to the right area where it needs to go. We're trying to raise up as much money as we can to send those items home. So let's support this support this we are going to support them as a church we are going to give money to them to help send these things back so if you are there and you have the financial need to help please pay money into that account uh, as you can any any amount small or large it doesn't matter each and every penny will go to where it's needed in the name of Jesus this is a needed cause in the name of Jesus because these nurses feel isolated they feel on their own let me tell you girls you're not on your own you'll never be on your own all the time that God is with you cannot be alone when Jesus was on the cross and he cried out father father why have you forsaken me God didn't forsake Jesus on the cross he turned his face away for us for a period of time he turned his eyes away for a period of time but you know what God is always with us God will never leave us nor forsake us but the very presence of God can leave you you don't feel at peace anymore when you find when God is at when when you're not acknowledging who God is in your life you feel empty you feel distraught you think where can I turn to what can I do we can turn to Jesus. This woman with issue of blood, she turned to Jesus in her hour of need. She turned to the only one that could help her. And let me tell you right now, the only one can help you through this situation right now. This only one can help you through this virus right now. The only one can help you through this isolation right now is Jesus Christ. So I'm asking you right now, if you're not born again and you listen to this program, 
He's the only one that can help you. He was the only one that could help me. He's the only one that could support me. He's the only one. No man or woman could help me, only Jesus Christ. Even the pastor of that church did not say anything to me about being born again. He did not say one word. He had the opportunity to lead me to Christ, but he didn't do it. I had to wait 20 odd years before I became born again in Jesus' name. And Jesus came to me in my hour of need. He came to me in a desperate, when I was in a desperate situation. And we all find ourselves in desperate situations from time to time. I want to pray with you right now that salvation will come to you this day. Because this is the day God has made for you. You're not on your own. You're not isolated. You have someone, an advocate, who's got to stand beside you every day, every minute of every day. I am quite assured that Jesus is with me when I get up in the morning, he's with me when I go to bed at night, he's with me throughout the whole day, and I know that if I turn around and touch him, he's there, because he said, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want to pray with you right now. If you're not born again, I want you to sit and listen with both ears. Don't just switch off and say, oh, oh he's going to preach another message. I'm going to try and pray for you right now in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Lord, right now for those who listen to this program. Listen to this program, Father, with their hearts and their minds to thinking, how can I change my life? How can, I, how can I be the man or woman you want me to be? Lord, I'm asking you right now to touch those people right now. Let them feel by the power of the Holy Spirit as I reach out from this channel right now that you may touch them in the name of Jesus. I'm asking you right now to say this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I confess, you as, I confess you as my saviour. I renounce the devil and all his ways. I ask you to come into my life and be my Lord and saviour. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that to today is the first day of the rest of my life and I want to serve you all my days. Father, I renounce all evil, all iniquity on in my life and say, help me, Father, to be the man or woman that you want me to be. Lord, wash and cleanse me with the blood of Jesus that I may be saved in Jesus' name. If you've said that prayer and you've said it with all your heart, your mind, your soul and your body, I can guarantee you that you're born again. That you've accepted Jesus into Christ into your life. And if you don't believe me, then give me a ring after the, after the show. Or give me a ring. The phone's on now. Please ring me. Or we can talk on the phone. There's a phone line here. Please call me. Uh, we can talk. If not, we can talk afterwards on 0790 Please call me. I'd love to talk to you, help you through any situation that I, that I can help you with in the name of Jesus. I'm not Jesus Christ. I never will be. I'm just a, a servant of the Most High God. And he changed my life. If he changed my life, he can change yours. I was in isolation once. You're in isolation now. But God can remove that isolation from you. This woman, and I want to read this scripture to you. A certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years years and suffered many things from many physicians and she spent all that she had was no better but rather grew worse when she heard about jesus she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment for she said if only i may touch his clothes i shall be made well if you only reach out with your voice and say lord help me god will respond to you in a positive manner in jesus name and verse 29 says immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up she felt in the body and was healed of her affliction Isolation can mean affliction in your life. And the minute you come to Jesus Christ, everything will change. Everything in your life will change. It may take time, but I can guarantee you everything in your life will change. When I became born again, I woke up the following day. Everything seemed brighter. Everything seemed clearer. My problems hadn't gone away. They were still there. But you know what? I had someone who was there to help my problem. I touched the hem of his garment. I touched Jesus Christ and he changed my life from the isolation which I was in to what he wanted me to be in Jesus' name. And verse 30, And then Jesus, immediately knowing in himself the power had gone out of him, turned around and said, Who touched my clothes? I want to rephrase that. Who called out to me? Who called my name? Who asked for salvation? Who was not to be on their own? Who doesn't want isolation? He said, who touched, my, who touched my clothes or who called out my name? I called out the name of Jesus Christ in my desperation. And you can do the same too. You can call out the name of Jesus in your life right now. And I tell you what, Jesus will respond. Because he responded, he said, who touched my clothes? The power left him 
and touch this woman. And the power of God will touch you right now. I'm praying for you right now that the power of God will reach out right now in the name of Jesus. I want to pray with you right now in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you, Father God, for those who are suffering, Lord, from isolation, those who are suffering from sickness, those who are suffering from uh, financial loss in the name of Jesus. I come against everything in the name of Jesus. I come against sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. I come against financial loss in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, right now you restore everything that the devil has stolen from them. I thank you, Father God, for those people listening right now, that salvation will be their portion, that abundance will be their portion, portion that they'll cry out to Jesus in their, in their hour of need and Lord I thank you Father God right now that you hear their cry you hear their call you hear what they want Father in the name of Jesus so I'm pleading with them right now Father that you just bless them Father bless the healing if you're suffering with sickness right now or when you lay hands on your sickness right now wherever it may be on your head right now in Jesus name if you've got a pain in your head I want you to lay, lay hands on your head if it's on your heart or your body anywhere in your body lay your hands on your body right now I want to pray for you right now if it's a financial situation ready to lay your hands on your checkbook or your purse or your or your uh, your pocket wherever your money is lay your hands on that right now in the name of jesus if it's a family situation i want you to just raise your hands and say for my family in jesus name and i want to pray right now father i thank you lord for those who are suffering sickness right now i pray for a healing right now i pray for a miraculous healing over their life right now i pray father you touch their body their mind and their spirit in the name of jesus that father Father, that you'll just heal every affliction that they have, that financially, Lord, they'll just benefit at every turn, that money will come in from uncommon sources. I thank you, Father God, right now, as they plant a seed of faith, that seed of faith will rise up, Father, and make have, a, have a, an abundance of crop in Jesus' name. I want to carry on with the scripture. And he looked round to see who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came down, fell before him and told him the whole truth. And he said, Daughter... Or son, whoever's out there now, they said, your faith has made you well. Go peace, go in peace and be healed of your affliction in Jesus' name. Be healed of your affliction right now. Be healed of your affliction right now. I'm crying out right now that you accept Christ into your life. And I know that God will heal every affliction that you have. And every problem you have, God will, re will restore every problem. Will just sort out every problem. It may take time. It may not happen overnight. But I can promise you, it will happen eventually. When I came to Christ, all my problems were still there. And I woke up the next morning, ever seemed brighter. But you know what? My problems were still there. But I had a way of handling them. I had Jesus Christ who was able to handle all my problems. I handed over my problems to him and say, Lord, here you are. He said, take my burden, for my burden is light. Cast your burdens upon me. That's what the Bible says. Cast your burdens upon Christ. And if isolation and loneliness is your portion, then cast it upon Jesus. Say, Lord, I don't want to be lonely anymore. I don't want to have this anymore. I was lonely in my life. But then God brought someone into my life. And now we've been married nearly 30 years. And I thank God for that in the name of Jesus. I thank God for my wonderful wife, who's such a tower of strength uh, through to, in me. And she helps me when I feel Feel, I feel like I can't go on. I turn to Jesus. I turn to my wife because we need someone physical in our life. If you haven't got someone physical in your life, I pray right now that someone will come into your life and be and just change your life from glory to glory to glory. Jesus can come in a physical and a spiritual way in the name of Jesus. I know from experience because I met Jesus Christ in my bedroom at three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock on a Monday morning, on a Tuesday morning, I met him in my bedroom. And he, he just said two words to me, follow me, and disappeared out of sight. I know it was Jesus. I know it was no one else. And people say, oh, you've not met Jesus. I tell you what, you can meet Jesus. But first of all, you have to die to self. And that day, that minute, I died to self. Die to self. Die to what you are. Because it's no good boasting about who you are. Boast of Jesus Christ. I see many pastors who boast about what, who they are and what they are and how, and how many miracles they've done. Stop boasting about what you've done. It's what Jesus has done in your life. It's more important in the name of Jesus. We have an advocate. His name is Jesus Christ. If you want to contact me, please phone me on that number. But don't forget, we need to support these nurses in sending back their belongings to the ones who've died. We want to send their belongings back to their homeland that their family may know that someone cares for them in this country. So please, if you want to support, please put some money into that account. The account details are up there. 
please put the money in and I'll make sure it gets to the right source that it needs to get to. We don't often plead for money and I won't plead for money for this ministry but what I'm pleading for money is for money to send items back to their loved ones in Africa or wherever they come from in the name of Jesus. We'll be closing very, very shortly but I want to pray with you right now and uh, that God may touch your life and change you from glory to glory. And Father, we thank you, Father God, for this message today. I pray, Father, that it reaches the hearts and minds of those who wish to hear it. I pray, Father, as we as we proceed through this day, through this situation we find ourselves in, this virus, Lord, that we'd all just turn to Jesus Christ because the author and finisher of our faith. Bless everyone who's listened to this service this morning, this afternoon. Take care of them. Let them phone up if they need to phone up. But, Father, provide every need they have in Jesus' name. We'll be closing very, very shortly. But I just want to reiterate that we'll be here the same time, the same, the same place next Tuesday. This is Pastor Ray Williams from IPC Church, uh, Church in Portsmouth. Uh, we meet every Sunday. At the moment, we can't meet for obvious reasons. But when we get back, and I'm making a claim now by the 17th of May that we'll be back in church. Uh, providing the government allow it, we'll be back doing our service as per usual every Sunday morning from 11 through to about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So please, if you're around the Portsmouth area, please phone me on my phone number. I'll give you all the details that you need to you need to find in Jesus' name. Thank you for listening this, uh, this afternoon. May God bless you. Uh, next week I've got uh, Pastor Richard Cunningham with me in the name of Jesus. So please come along, uh, listen next Sunday. Uh, no, sorry, next Tuesday afternoon, uh, 1 o'clock to 1.30. You'll be a blessing to me. Look forward to seeing you next Tuesday. May God bless you. May God sanctify you according to perfect will. Keep your faith. Keep trusting in Jesus. Be like the woman with the issue of blood. Reach out to Jesus because he wants to totally heal you in every way. He wants to take away the isolation from your mind in the name of Jesus. Though we may be isolated physically, but spiritually, we're not isolated because we have Jesus Christ who's with us always to the end of the age. God bless you. God keep you. May God sanctify you. God sanctify your family. Just reach out and touch him because he wants to hear you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God.